stop by Pete's Garage. Now today we are going to learn about O2 sensors, oxygen sensors and catalytic converters. We're going to learn how they work, how to know when they're going bad and what you can do to make them last longer. Now before we talk about the O2 sensor which is on the exhaust side of the engine we have to talk about what's coming into the engine because what comes into the engine and what happens inside the engine and what comes out of the engine determines what this is going to read. Now the engine in your car is just like a human body. It has to breathe. So let's all breathe in. You think that's air you're breathing now? So if I were to ask you what you think you're breathing, you'd probably say oxygen. And you're 21% right, because the air we breathe is 79% nitrogen and only 21% oxygen. That means coming into your engine is all this nitrogen and oxygen. Now it would be really awesome if we could just live on the air that we breathe. Now we all know that isn't true, your body needs fuel. And unlike your body, your engine is not going to run on pizza, burgers, and fries. Now the fuel your engine is going to run on is gasoline. And gasoline gets its energy from all of the elements in the chemical compound. Some of the main components of gasoline are isooctane, butane, 3 ethyl toluene and the octane enhancer methyl tert butyl ether or MTBE. MTBE is the volatile, flammable, and colorless component of gasoline that makes it burn. Now you can see from those chemical compounds there are plenty of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms. The presence of hydrogen is what makes gasoline a hydrocarbon. When you take all of that and mix that with the nitrogen and the oxygen in the air is when we have the potential to produce energy to run the engine. So you notice on both sides of the compound equation we have oxygen. And it's the oxygen in the exhaust that the O2 sensor is going to pick up. But how does the oxygen get released to be in the exhaust stream for the O2 sensor to sense it? Well, it's pretty simple. We take all of that fuel and we put it in a cylinder, we suck in some air, we compress it, and the spark plug ignites and... Now you don't really have an explosion in the cylinder, what you have is a rapid burning of the fuel. And as the fuel burns, it expands very fast. That's what causes the piston to go down. Now as it's coming up, the piston is going to exhaust all of the exhaust fumes and the unburnt fuel and that is where our O2 sensor starts to work. So what we have coming into the engine is our carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. It comes in, it goes through the combustion process, those chemicals are broken down through heat and uh, the uh, burning of the fuel and pressure and what comes out of the engine is nitrogen, uh, CO2 or carbon dioxide and water vapor. That's why sometimes you get water coming out your exhaust because water vapor or water is a product of the combustion process. Now a very small portion of the exhaust gas are the NOx emissions or the nitrous oxides. Those are usually produced because of excessive heat during combustion. Then you're going to have the carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons, that's from unburned fuel and air that's coming in that wasn't completely burnt or combusted. That goes out the tailpipe along with some of the uh, particulates. So you might get some particulate, black particulate like the soot. That's the black stuff you'll find on your tailpipe. Now we understand how all of that oxygen gets into the exhaust stream, which is when our O2 sensor or oxygen sensor starts to go to work. This is a small electrical device and each vehicle will have at least one. It's going to sit immediately behind the exhaust manifold and it's going to be the first thing or first device that the exhaust gas sees as it exits the engine. It gets plugged into the wiring harness and it's always talking to the computer in the car. Now there are many types of O2 sensors and most of them are heated. There's a heating element that goes inside to help warm up the gas on a cold start and when that heating element starts to fail or fails it doesn't catalyze or read the oxygen right and it gives a code back to the computer and your check engine light comes on. Most O2 sensors work the same. You have a shield here to protect the sensor. It gets screwed into the uh, exhaust manifold. This part sits in the exhaust stream. The exhaust comes across here, goes through the shield, and hits a zirconium dioxide ceramic sensor. It's a thimble that sits there and sniffs the exhaust gas to sense the amount of oxygen in the exhaust. In this sensor, 
the blue and white wires go through the white ceramic insulator number two and they go all the way up to the zirconium dioxide thimble to provide heat. That heats up. That sensor then provides back through number one a piezoelectric crystal. It feeds back a voltage to the computer to let it know how much oxygen is present in the exhaust. Your engine is always running rich or lean. The computer takes the information coming back from the O2 sensor and adjusts the engine to maximize combustion. It's measuring the temperature of the exhaust, the amount of oxygen in the exhaust. It's measuring on the front side, it's measuring the oxygen coming in and the temperature of the incoming air. It's measuring the temperature of the engine, all kinds of things that's being measured. And if, it, if it's running hot, if you have a hot ignition, it can change the timing. If it's running cool, it can change the fuel mixture so you get optimum air to fuel ratio. But the O2 sensor simply tells the computer how much oxygen is present in the exhaust so the computer can adjust how the engine is running to maximize combustion. Now that the engine is maximizing combustion, it's minimizing the amount of carbon monoxide and nitrous oxide that the engine is putting out. And yes, that nitrous oxide is the same nitrous oxide used when you go to the doctor's office. It's laughing gas. It's also the same nitrous oxide that goes into rocket engines as an oxidizer to burn the fuel as it leaves the atmosphere. And yes, that's the same nitrous oxide that people put in a bottle, put in the back of their car, and pipe it into the engine to get more horsepower and why. If you remember, our atmosphere is 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. Well, nitrous oxide has more oxygen in it. It's 64% nitrogen and 36% oxygen. That extra oxygen goes into the cylinder and more oxygen means the fuel is going to burn faster. It's an oxidizer. Oxygen is an oxidizer. The fuel burns faster, the faster it burns, the faster it's going to push down the piston and the more horsepower you're going to get out of your engine. That's why you have to be careful when you run your car in an enclosed environment. The nitrous oxide is going to put you to sleep. The carbon monoxide is going to kill you. Now at this point, the engine has worked with the computer and all of the sensors to maximize the combustion process and minimize the amount of nitrous oxide and carbon monoxide in the exhaust. But it's not perfect, so we have to clean it up a little bit more. And what do we do? We run it through a catalytic converter. The catalytic converter is located in the exhaust system right behind the exhaust manifold. Sometimes you will see an O2 sensor right in front of the catalytic converter. When you get an error code, the front one will be referred to as bank 1. Sometimes the O2 sensor is right in the catalytic converter and the one in the catalytic converter can be bank 2. Now this is how a catalytic converter works and how you can tell when it's going bad. The exhaust gas enters a catalytic converter and goes through this honeycomb pattern. This design allows for maximum surface area for the catalyst material and allows the exhaust gas to flow through smoothly. If you hear rattling in your catalytic converter, it's because this honeycomb is broken up to the little chunks and it's time to replace your catalytic converter because it's no longer working efficiently. So the exhaust gas has to go through a two-step process. It has to be reduced, then it has to be oxidized. You have to take those gases, reduce them into simpler atoms, and then oxidize them so they can be passed on in a cleaner form. After they are reduced, they are oxidized in the presence of a noble metal like platinum, palladium, rhodium, copper, nickel, cerium, or manganese. These are the metals that make catalytic converters very expensive. When we recycle our catalytic converters, we're recycling them and the metal reclaimed is the platinum, palladium, and rhodium. So you put that all together and what do you get? The exhaust gas comes into the catalytic converter. The carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and nitrogen oxides go through the honeycomb and a catalyst substrate and then they're turned into carbon dioxide, water, and nitrogen. That's how we take in air and fuel, manage the combustion process with an O2 sensor, put it through a catalytic converter, and turn it into a gas that's more friendly to the environment. Now the big thing, what do you do to make these components last longer? Well first, Change your air filter on a regular basis. The engine has to breathe, and if it's not breathing fresh, clean air, it's going to struggle to breathe, and it's not going to burn the fuel properly. Next, change your oil on a regular basis. Oil does more than just lubricate. It dissipates heat, and as oil collects more and more metal, and it gets denser and blacker, it contains heat, and if it doesn't 
take away the heat, the engine is going to run hotter, you get incomplete combustion, it will produce more hydrocarbons, and that's what's going to clog up your catalytic converter and cause your engine not to run right. You might even see it surge. So, oil change. Next is fuel filter. You got to make sure you're supplying clean fuel. So if you can, on a regular basis, it might be every 20, 30, 40,000 miles, make sure you change your fuel filter so you're always getting nice, clean fuel to the engine. Next is tire pressure. You might not think the tire pressure affects your engine, but tire pressure is really important because as the lower the pressure gets in your tire, the more rolling friction there is in the tire. The more rolling friction there is, the harder the engine has to work to move the car forward. The harder the engine has to work, the more it's going to pull more fuel, it's going to burn hotter, it's going to produce more hydrocarbons, more NOx and CO2, it's going to have to work harder, and you're going to burn out your catalytic converter. So please, keep your air pressure filled. Finally, we have quite simply just driving smoothly. If you're a if you have a heavy foot and you stomp on the pedal and you have to run up to the light and stop and then run up to the light and stop, that radical driving is confusing the engine. Remember, your engine's always lean or rich. And if you're stomping on the gas, the engine can never find a happy medium. So the smoother you can accelerate, the smoother you can decelerate, the easier it is for the engine and the easier it is for the computer to react to provide a more stable combustion environment so the emissions that are put out that are put through or across your O2 sensor and through your catalytic converter the cleaner those will be and you won't clog up your O2 sensor and you won't clog up the catalytic converter. Now if you haven't already please click on the subscribe button so you can stay up with all the projects I do here in the shop and all the educational videos I make. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.